Okay, this is uh, section 6.4. Uh, this is problem number 32. This is a Newton's problem. It's kind of complicated, so I'm going to do it in two parts. The first part I'll do in one video, and I'll do the next part in another video. And again, it's section 6.4. <clears throat> and what we have is um, a temperature of an ingot of silver is 60 degrees centigrade above room temperature right now. 20 minutes ago, it was 70 degrees centigrade above the room temperature. How far above the room temperature will the silver be? And then we've got some different time parameters. But first of all, we have to find K, and we have to find the general equation that we're going to use. And this is Newton's formula. T minus T sub S equals T sub 0 minus T sub S e to the negative KT, where K is positive. Of course, we want to find K so we can get a general form for this, and then we can just start putting the numbers in. So... They don't really tell you what the temperature of the room is, but they tell you the relevant temperature and the way it works out that it fits into our formula real nicely. In other words, if we let T sub 0 equal the temperature right now, and the room temperature is T sub S, and T, which is the temperature at any time, that varies with time. That's the T in our formula over here. Okay, and uh, little t will be time. And uh, what we have is the a room temperature, yeah, it says right now, so room temperature is Ts, so right now, so this is right now, we're 60 degrees above room temperature. What that really means is that T sub 0 right now minus the room temperature, since it's above the room temperature, will be 60 degrees. That's the difference. Well, when we look at this, this is right in our formula up here. Now, it says that T equals minus 20. Now, you could have set this up uh, and started at 20 being 0 and then going to plus 20. But I just set, uh, decided to use it for right now at this, uh, this uh, 60 above temperature, above the room temperature. So we just use T as being minus 20. We're going back in time, but it works all right when we run through the formula. So it says that T minus 20, then the temperature uh, of our ingot was 70 degrees above the temperature of the room, so the difference would be 70 degrees. 70 degrees above the room temperature. So that works out pretty good right there. It looks on our formula right there. So actually we have the numbers in our formula all set up ready to go based upon the information ga they gave us. Okay? All right, so what we do is we just put this in the formula. So first of all, write down the formula again. All right, and then we know that the difference between the temperature and the room at T minus 20, so that's going to be negative 20, is going to be 70. And the initial temperature, or the temperature, temperature now, the difference between that and the temperature of the room is 60. And this is at E. That's at negative 20. See, this is the one that varies with respect to time, so this time's got to coordinate with this temperature here. So at minus 20, this difference was 70. Okay, this was the initial. Okay, then if we divide both sides by 60, that's 70 over 60, which reduces to be 7 over 6. We have 7 over 6 equals E. Now what's a negative times a negative? It's a positive, so 20K. Or K times 20. And then if we want to solve for K, we have to take the natural log of both sides. Move this up a little bit here. So the natural log of 7 over 6 equals the natural log of E K20. And then I can bring that up in front, and that's the same thing as and I'll put the 20 front, 20K times the natural log of E. But the natural log of E is just 1, so that goes away. So I can divide both sides by 20, and I get the natural log of 7 over 6 divided by 20 
equals k. So there's our k. Now we're going to keep this in the exponential form in our formula. So what I'm going to do is I'll try to write a little bit more economical. So I can say this is the same thing as 1 over 20 times the natural log of 7 over 6. But 1 over 20 has a decimal. That's going to be 0 0.05. So I can write it like this. K equals 0 0.05 times the natural log of 7 over 6. So now I've got my k, and it's a nice economical manner. So now I can write my general formula with the k in involved there. Okay, then e. I remember my formula's got a negative k. If you look up here at the original formula, it's got a negative k. So we have all these negatives that are canceling out, but now we're going to put this in the formula, so it's going to be negative k and negative 0 0.05 times the natural log of 7 over 6, and then that's times t. So there's your formula that you can really start to use. Okay. So it's kind of tricky the way they gave you the information to incorporate it into the formula like this and like this. So those are the key ideas. Okay, and I'll do part two in just a moment.